careful construction, as it says up, up there, the careful construction of our yoga practice as it relates to our real life. And by yoga, in this, in this context, I mean our asana practice. Okay? And so that's important because our real life in yoga means sthira. Okay? That's in, that's in um, Sanskrit, sthira. And sukha means the steady alertness and the lightness and comfort of being. What does that mean? That means that when you begin to practice your yoga, when you begin to practice your asana, how you move through your poses, how you're aware of how that's affecting your body, how you're aware of the subtle changes that are happening in your body, give you the keys to being in awareness with your life so that you can then readjust, realign, and reaffirm whatever it is you need to do. So many times we walk through life and we're not even aware of what's happening, what we leave in our way, what our thoughts are, are creating, or ha you know, they're creating habits. My favorite, my favorite when, when um, I have my coaching clients and they come to me in business, I say, you know, do you like where your business is? And then inevitably they'll tell me, no, I want it to be at a different level. I want to take it to the next level. Then you're the one that has to change, right? You have to change your perceptions. Once you change your perceptions, once you change your awareness, then you can begin to change your actions. Same thing here, right? If you're moving through your mat and you're not aware of what's happening, are you gonna hit the poses? No, you're not. Are you gonna benefit from the, um, from the health benefits of the poses? No, you're not. Could you hurt yourself by doing a pose incorrectly? What do you think? Yes. Could you hurt yourself financially and um, emotionally and spiritually outside if you hit the wrong person or you do the wrong move or you make the wrong decision? Yes. 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 The yoga you practice on your mat is exactly the same as the yoga we practice when we're in conversation with each other. When we're in a room with each other, we're all connected. In the book, I asked you to read, okay? I asked you to read the introduction. Let me read to you the science behind the introduction. At Stanford, in case everybody knows what Stanford University is, right? It's one of the best universities out there, okay? Stanford Department of Material Science professor and researcher Dr. William Tiller has offered the following model, right? It's in the book. I hope you read it. Understand it. Function is a consequence or an effect or equal to the structure. And the structure is equal to the positive time, space, energy. Time, space, energies. And those are our physical bodies. Time, space, energies are our physical body. Negative time, space, energies are the etheric body. Those, those are composed of our emotions, our thoughts, our feelings, our etheric body. Our etheric body is our mind, our body, and our spirit. If you went and had a picture taken of your aura, you would get colors all around you, yeah? And, and it's kind of cool to take a look at that. But we're not just in this body. This is it. No. Our body extends outward, and now quantum physicists are, are actually researching at the study, at, um, excuse me, at the um, Arizona State University on how we are making strides and how our mind is affecting our ethereal body, right? This is stuff that's been known for ages through yoga, right? 
right? That's why yoga has been used for healing. It's in, that's why many moons ago, over 5,000 years ago, when yoga was created, it was 